differences between Formula One and IndyCar? I've got that question all the time. I thought it was cool just to go a little bit more into details. If I start with uh, what you need to adapt as a driver going to Formula One, from Formula One to IndyCar, the first thing I would say is no power thing with an IndyCar. So muscle mass is very different. Muscle demand is very different. Formula One, it's all about the G-forces and your neck. IndyCar, less G-forces because less downforce on the car, but um, a very, very heavy steering wheel. You need really to work on your shoulders, on your grip strengths, uh, on your forearms, biceps, triceps, lats, uh, to be able to turn the wheel. So that's a huge difference. Uh, definitely a very, very heavy wheel in IndyCar. One of the first thing I realized is that the grip on the steering wheel has to be perfect for you to be able to hold it correctly and drive it the way you want to drive it. The car itself, IndyCar is very simplistic technology wise compared to Formula One. You know, uh, we've got still wishbones and, and uprights and uh, kind of a simple gearbox and uh, no hybrid system so far. Everyone's got the same aerodynamic. It's not the most developed aerodynamic for performance, but it's developed for racing and the racing is really cool. You can follow other cars pretty easily. Um, there's a lot of mechanical grip on the car. The dampers is the only part of the car that we can, the teams can change, right? They can build their own dampers. There's a lot of setup you can do on the car, but everyone's got the same options of setup. The dampers though are specific to every team. So that's why we put a lot of energy and effort into it. But the mechanical grip of an Indy car into the low speed corner uh, or on the bumps is uh, very impressive. High speed corners, uh, that, as I said, the downforce is very little, so you've got much less than Formula One, but I'm pretty sure on an airpin, an Indy car will be faster than a Formula One car on a high speed corners, completely the opposite. Um, so yeah, very simple car in Indy car, everyone's got the same, so that's a huge difference. As I said, dampers can be developed, then we can change the roll centers, the, the, the lengths of the wheelbase and, and so many setups of obviously springs and roll bars and so on. Um, but that's a, that's a big one. The other big, big difference that in Formula One, you can control your differential uh, and your brake shape through your steering wheel. In IndyCar, we don't have that. Uh, an IndyCar steering wheel is, is very simplistic. There's the radio button, there's the weight jacket on ovals, and then inside the cockpit, we've got the front and the rear anti-roll bar. So we can actually change the position of our roll bars inside the cockpit. So on an ovals, you use that a lot. Uh, it can be, you know, every straight, you, you change your position because of the wind or so on, on the racetrack, more normal racetrack, depending, you know, your tire degradation and so on, you can actually change the balance of the car, mechanical balance of the car from inside the cockpit, which is pretty cool. Um, if there's a fast section of the, of the track, maybe you want to have a stiff platform, but then you go into a, like a more tricky section, you want a soft platform. So you can play with the bar inside the car, which is, uh, which is pretty cool, help you to uh, get on top of, uh, you know, all your tire degradation and so on. So then you're gonna tell me yes, but one of the big difference in any car is the aero screen versus the halo. Yes, yes, I, I agree. <laughs> um, I mean, it's the same principle, but on, on IndyCar, we've got the protection from the aero screen. I believe the aero screen is a very good solution on ovals because you don't want any debris flying towards the pilot or the driver. On road course and street course, the, um, the aero screen is absolutely fine in terms of visibility. The only downside I would say that sometimes it gets really dirty and you need a pit stop to remove the tear offs and it gets super hot in the car but it's more protection, so it's a tough one. Maybe, maybe, and it's only a maybe, I would do halo on, on street course and road course and, and aero screen on ovals. Then the racetrack, we have street course, we have road course, and we have ovals. And within the ovals, we've got the super speedway, the big ovals and the tiny one, the short ovals. Uh, so there's a lot of adaptation. Street course and road course, very similar to Formula One. The street course a little bit more bumpy. The road course are quite old style, the way I love it. In the ovals, for me, it's just like riding a bicycle, a road bike, that's just riding a mountain bike you know you kind of do the same thing but they're very different and that's the best way I would uh, I would describe ovals and then within the ovals I said the short ovals that I I love I love the short ovals there's two three lane lanes it's a lot of really good racing and then the super speedway when you when you have a good car you feel like you are the king out there and and when the car is not that great it's a very long day so um, yeah, I learned the hardware the Indy 500 when your car is not that good. Don't try to compensate for it. It won't, uh, it won't go to the end, uh, which it didn't. So I learned my lesson that way. Um, but yes, that's, that's a huge difference between the two. Then if we go through the rules, I'll say IndyCar's got less rules, you know. I think it's more to the discretion of the stewards to judge the racing. It is a bit of a tougher racing. I believe sometimes it's gone a little bit too far. You know, I think my pass on Jimmy Johnson at Corkscrew in 2021 was definitely not, uh, I mean, it was good for TV, but it wasn't the best cleanest overtaking ever made. Uh, I'm still really hangry 
at Joseph New Garden crashing into me in Nashville uh, whilst I was having a brilliant race and not having a penalty just because we were side by side. So sometimes, you know, I think we, we're a little bit too soft on some of the rules, whereas Formula One is far too hard on the rules. In terms then of skills, driver skills, obviously you've got some very talented drivers on both sides, Formula One being the pinnacle of motorsport, but look at Alex Palou when he went to do the FP1 in Austin uh, on the same tires as London Norris, he was only two tenths off which was very impressive. So I think the level in IndyCar, some of the drivers are top drivers, very, very fast drivers. There's one thing though in IndyCar is that the car behaves in a way that I understand some drivers just can go around it. The car is very free, very loose, very oversteer in entry of the corner and then understeer mid corner. And then the exit is pretty good actually. But if you struggle with a car that kind of moves a lot like, like that under braking, uh, you're gonna struggle in IndyCar. It's just the way it is. Uh, fast car always oversteer, we used to say back in Formula 3, talking about 15 years ago. Well, it's definitely the case in IndyCar. As soon as you start picking up understeer, your pace drops. Uh, so you have to accept that the car is loose, the car slides, and that's the way you drive an IndyCar. So I understand that some drivers really struggle with it. I love it, personally, my driving style type. But yes, it, it's, it's a different skill in that aspect. While it's in Formula 1, you need to be very smooth and not slide the tire. In IndyCar, you actually keep pushing, hammer the tire, keep sliding, and if you try to be smooth and, and proper, it just doesn't really pay off. So it's all it's all about attacking all the time, which uh, which is great. Then, mental task. So IndyCar is le much less button, much less to think about batteries and so on. But you think about your fuel. Uh, your fuel is very key in the race, and, and which tire you're gonna put in when. And the thing in IndyCar is that the soft tires, we run them for three, four laps in free practice, one, we run them in qualifying, then in the race. But we never really do a long run on the soft hours because we don't have any so it's hard to know the degradation going into the race so you need to adapt yourself very quickly to how it's gonna go and how much you can push on each tire in formula one everything is more calculated uh, you know your pit stop you've got plan a plan b plan c and more for some teams but basically normally you have three plans going into the race and you kind of work around that in indycar it's much more on the go depending when there's a yellow flag coming when depending when the pits are open or closed depending the tires depending you know how much you are uh, fuel burn so that's the difference uh, as i say in indycar push to pass in the race in that aspect, it's a very different type of, of driving. Which one I prefer? That's the other question I always have all the time. Well, imagine you have a boy and a girl. Which one you prefer? You got both. You don't need to choose. I was very lucky in my life to be able to do Formula 1 for 10 years, uh, not to do IndyCar, and loving it. And I love both. I mean, they came to a different time of my life. They came at the right time. And I'm just really enjoying my, uh, my time right now. I'm very proud of my career in Formula 1. Happy to be alive and happy to be racing. Mm -hmm.